Linked, and I'm here to report uh, progress on some spouse applications. Uh, uh, spouse applications are under a lot of stress and duress since last year, since November of last year. Because of some policy changes, the way they're looking at the spouse visa applications, the, because of a large number of influx of spouse visa applications from students from India, uh, starting you know uh, last year, and also possibly due to coronavirus, these applications are under a lot of stress, and uh, their criteria and their approval is undergoing a lot of scrutiny. And I will discuss with you some cases. I have one case today to report to you and to let you know how the immigration is thinking about these applications. Uh, so this application is from a, a husband in India. The student uh, wife is in Canada in Gatineau near Ottawa. And I've mentioned some, some things on the screen as you can see on the screen. So the applicant who is male married 2013. So that means the marriage is close to seven years old. So seven years marriage, there's no uh, doubt and suspicion about whether it's genuine marriage or bona fide or something. Seven years marriage, seven years old marriage, applied for open work permit, intends to join the spouse in Canada who's on a uh, study permit. Spouse is completing, I've hidden the names because of privacy. Uh, completing some course at uh, at a college in Gatineau and is also working part time. Uh, they also have one uh, child uh, who wants to come uh, along with the father, and they have been refused five uh, four times in the past. So that's fine. So we have the letter of enrollment. The applicant is working in a government job in India. I will not divulge where he's working, but he's working in a government job in India. He's making close to 45 to 50,000, uh, close to uh, between 40 and 45,000 rupees uh, a month. As you can see on the next line, uh, the 2019 and 20 ITR also shows an annual income of more than 500 lakh rupees. Panja lakh rupees is jada hai on the income, it's shown ITR. The bank documents have been reviewed. Uh, I note a stable, visa officer, I note a stable bank balance for the past six months, so that's that's fine. Though applicant appears to have funds to support his stay in Canada, I find it unreasonable that he would leave his stable employment behind to go to Canada with a minor dependent, considering that his spouse still requires financial support to complete. This is totally illogical and absurd. I have never seen anything like it in the hundreds of visa applications I've done. On one hand, we expect the applicant in India to have a good job, to have a steady job with a good salary and good funds so that we can show that he has establishment in India. That means he has funds to support his wife as well. In this case, uh, the husband has a good job, good income, good funds. Everything is good. Everything is near perfect, as I would say. But on, on the contrary, the, the visa of, officer has, has stated that why would he leave his stable job? That means why would he leave his government job to go to Canada to live with the wife, which does not make sense. On one hand, if you want the husband to have a good establishment, and we have the establishment, this establishment uh, cannot be improved. Government job, good salary, good funds, everything. So we have an establishment to the country of residence. And if he has to go to Canada, maybe for one year, two year, or possibly for PR, we don't know. But still, you know, if he wants to, he can possibly take a leave and come back to live in India. Why would they ignore something like a good stable job and to say that this is the reason why he would never go, it does not make sense. Anyway, I also, I also read uh, further. I've also considered that the spouse would have to pay the high cost of daycare. I've under, underlined in uh, the high cost in red. That, that the spouse would have to pay the high cost of daycare in Canada or stay home to take care of minor dependents. So, of course, high cost of daycare, yes, uh, daycare is expensive in Canada. Anywhere in Canada, I would expect anywhere between $700 dollars $800, depending on the city, even up to $1,000 some places per month, per child to take care of daycare. Now, do they have enough funds to pay for the daycare and maybe do a job or, uh, you, know, uh, you know, maybe not do a job and, you know, uh, you know live, just live on their savings? So this is a, this is a valid uh, logical, you know, consideration, I, I, I would say. But in this case, the the uh, the husband is is taking to um, to Canada a lot of funds. In in this case, close to about between ten to twelve lakh rupees. So I don't see that as a problem. 
but still they would use this as a way to say that they cannot afford the daycare, which, which sounds unreasonable to me. And this, this uh, refusal will not stand the scrutiny of if it is, was gone to a federal court for uh, unreasonableness, it will not, not stand the test. Uh, I will read for, further. It does not appear reasonable to me that he would leave his employment and use his savings to go to Canada. Yeah, how, does it, how does it matter? You know, on one hand, you want us to have a good job. And on, a, on the other hand, now you, you are asking me to say, look, I have a good job. But why would I leave a good job? Because I want to stay with my wife. So a good job is not an excuse for, you know, not going to the wife. A good job, that's fine. I have a job. But hey, if I have to live with my wife, I will think about it. Maybe I'll take an NOC. I'll go for, you know, official leave for maybe a couple of years, whatever the department allows, and then I'll think about it. But how can they use this as a reason to say that you will, you know, you will actually go leave the job and should go? Uh, that the spouse should complete the studies by the end of 2020. So, you know, that's fine. By the end of 2020, the spouse will complete the studies and in future, maybe she'll apply for postgraduate work permit or not. But that still does not negate the official version of whether he would leave this uh, government job to go to Canada. I mean, I, I've seen many examples last year in which people have left. I remember a, a, a client who was actually working in uh, I think Water Security Force or uh, IT, ITBP, indo tibetan Power Police, and he got the visa without any of these uh, illogical, uh, you know, you know, assertions that why would he leave this job? But he still got the visa. What my, I just want to complete the last line. In review of this information, I'm not satisfied the applicant will depart Canada at the end of period authorized application refused under R20, which is of course uh, 20 is uh, is is implying either the problem of the funds or establishment to the country of residence. That is what this implication is. So this kind of, this kind of uh, refusal reasons is emblematic of the problems that is occurring right now for the past about four months, starting from, I think, late February, let's say March, April, May, June. None of the spouse visa applications are being approved at this point of time because of you know, the various reasons and if you are thinking of applying for the spouse visa for your own, own uh, for your own uh, spouse i would recommend that you hang on to your application for now because there's a good chance that even the best of the applications will face uh, undue rejections as of uh, as as you saw in, in this uh, case so this is all i wanted to let you know i hope i have protected the privacy of the applicant just wanted to share with you uh, you know, what is happening in spouse visa applications. Many consultants wonder and many clients ask me, uh, should I apply right now? Or should I apply after a couple of months or something? Uh, when you see uh, even cases like this, not finding favor with the visa officers, I would, I would recommend that you hold on, do not apply for at least, uh, you know, a few months uh, and then see what happens. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, I always look at the comments and I always, uh, you know, read all of them though i do not reply to all of them because i i choose which uh, you know uh, are, are justifying my time to to respond to them uh, many people ask me what is your whatsapp number what is your email address everything is listed on my youtube profile so you can contact me from there thank you very much and uh, take care